All right, we've got a video today on the Reason Chord Sequencer. It's been a while since I made a Reason video, and I hope to make some more in the future. I really love Reason. I love using Reason as a rack device, and the new stuff they keep coming out with is always kind of exciting. And I feel like this one is probably one of the most exciting players that they've released, in my opinion. And it's also something that I've focused on a lot in the past with Machine and with Cubase, and that is this chord functionality. So they call it the chord sequencer. We just came out last week, and I'm just gonna walk you through why I think this is a really cool device, kind of look at it together. I haven't played with it much myself, so I'm not an expert on it, but I just wanna show you why it's a cool device and give you another reason for reason. Sorry, I actually didn't plan on saying that, but dad humor side, you do have to look at these software packages out there and decide if they're going to help you and if they're going to be worth it. You can buy Reason, you can buy the Reason Chord Sequencer, or you can subscribe and pay a monthly fee. And the cool part about the subscription thing is you could actually try Reason for yourself for a month. I think they still have a free offer for that. And then you could decide if it's worth it. And I know a lot of you, like me, aren't huge fans of subscriptions, but in some ways they make sense for people to try stuff out because there's nothing worse than buying a software package that costs three, four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, whatever, and then realizing that you don't need it or you don't use it. So the chords we're going to talk about today are really neat in terms of throwing in these chords into your project, but then what do you do with the melody over top of a chord that's like, you know, a G9 or a G minor seven or a D sharp six nine. What the heck are you supposed to do in terms of notes over top of these fancy chords? So I've got a video on that kind of stuff, which I'll link to in the description. And I've got other videos on Reason Players, which I'll put in the description as well. So you can go and check those out, but really important to, to check that chords one out because the whole point of these devices is to stir up creativity. It's not necessarily to be a crutch and you can learn from these things. I was watching Ryan Harlan's great video. I was watching the, uh, uh, the live stream they did on the chord sequencer, and he's talking about using this kind of stuff as training, you know? And I think that's the key here, is not for you to just find these tools to replace music theory, but to actually help you and to make you realize what you like the sound of, you're gonna start noticing, I really like sus chords, or I really like the seven chords or whatever. And then you can start digging into that stuff and learning it, and then maybe even start practicing your piano so you can get these kind of chords on your fingers or your guitar or whatever. So let's check out the chord sequencer, see what it's all about, and see if it's something that will help you. Here we go. Oh, by the way, I'm not getting paid to make the video, but they send me the software for free. First thing I'll, I'll just mention is I've got a machine kit in here, and I will mention this for the machine users. This stuff will all work on machine on the Mac, but I still don't think it's gonna work on machine on a PC because machine on PC and on Mac doesn't have VST3 support for third party plugins. Somebody please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's the state of things right now. Reason Rack does work on Mac and PC on Cubase. So what I've got here is a machine kit up top, which I will just maybe play, play some beats in later if I want to. So here we've got the chord sequencer. I've got an algorithm loaded up and as I was saying in my last video, I absolutely love this FM synthesizer. And working with Reason again recently has reminded me how much I like the sound of this one. So anytime you want to use the chord sequencer, all you got to do is have your instrument and then just drag a chord sequencer right on top of it and it will then be connected. So I've got my machine set up. So all of these pads correspond to the chords up here on the chord sequencer, which is fantastic and it makes a lot more sense than the keyboard but of course if you don't have pads you can just trigger all this stuff by the keyboard and it's going to start every two octaves on a C. They have sets of chords that somebody has created and chosen you know what these kind of chords work really nicely with uh, this style of music so we click right here and we can see the styles of music and uh, we could start with, say, let's go to oh, wait, soundtrack and classical. That would be fun to try with some orchestral software. I'm also going to show you how you can take the chord sequencer here and apply it to any virtual instrument. So not just to the ones in Reason. Let's go to Cocktail Deluxe. Oh, that sounds like fun. You may not know this, but I have a huge collection of cocktail records. I like to play them. Maybe start channeling my inner Donnie Benet. And then we're back at the beginning. 
So next thing you'll notice down here at the bottom is this little sequencer. And this is where you can take a chord, drag it down onto this little bar here, and you will actually trigger chords every time you press play. So the sequencer works like this. You've got a pattern that comes default with the kit. I could just clear this and drop in my own chords, or I could drag other chords on top of the sequencer down below, and I can choose how fine the resolution is right here. I'm just gonna clear this and drop in the same chords I was just playing. And then we'll see if we wanna play with the timing a little bit. And then we go to E minor, A7 Alt, your different voicings of the same chord, and then D minor, and then G7 alt. Okay, so all of these kind of crazy chords, altered chords mean that there is an extended note that's been um, altered. So it's either been pushed up or pushed down. So made sharp or made flat. And I've got a video describing that whole thing. So make sure you watch that video if this stuff is new to you or you're interested in it. Let's push this chord just a little bit earlier. And as you can see, my resolution isn't allowing me to push it nice really close. So let's just try eighth notes. Try that out. And then this one's going to go an eighth note earlier. And you can see that the chord stops if there's a gap like that. I'll move that one closer. There we go. So I've got a little beat in there, and then now, of course, we can hear these chords getting triggered every time I press play. So let's just go over some of the really great little features of this. So one thing I can do is click on a chord, and now you can see that it's selected right here, and I can click the Edit button, and I can start editing the notes in there. So, and one thing I wished we had was the ability to hear the note as I click on it right here. That would be really nice. I'm not sure if I'm missing that, but I don't think that's possible yet. Let's maybe add another note up here. And so now let's have a listen to that. And then what you can also do is you can click on this chord right here and I can just go over to my keyboard and I can play something in. So I'm just gonna go with this one here. Similar chord. So you can see how you could go in there, you could tweak the chords to your own liking very easily, which is of course something we can't do on the machine in the machine software, something I've been asking for for a long time. And then also of course to make your own chords, you can edit the ones that are in here and it will intelligently try to interpret the chords. It seems to be pretty good so far from the chords I've tried out, but there might be a few mistakes in there. And the problem with chord interpretation is you can call a note in a chord a couple of different things and often it depends on context before and after the chord so it's it's a little tough to just say hey this is this chord or this crazy jazz chord or whatever i'm going to click a little drop down i'm going to copy the chords to pattern two because right now if i click on pattern two there's nothing there so i'm going to click the drop down and say copy chords to pattern two and now i go to pattern two and there is no chords down below so i could play this whole thing this whole progression or i can use these chords in a totally different way so now what I can do is trigger these chords in real time with just notes here on my Cubase sequencer. So I don't even need to use this fancy sequencer that they've got in here. And this would be a good chance for me to talk about what the different colors are. So you can see the bright green colors mean going to this chord here will probably follow nicely from this first one. So what it's doing is giving you suggestions based on the chord you're on what might be nice to go to uh, in terms of the next chord? So take these suggestions with a grain of salt, try stuff out, and because the truth is going from C major to F major is a nice progression, and right now it's kind of darkened out. So anyways, don't get caught up too much in what it's telling you works or doesn't work. So let's play something in here. Let me just show you another really cool feature. What we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on this, duplicate this track, and we're gonna call this one Bass. And we're gonna go over to Europa, drop a 
base patch on there. And so now what I need to do is turn this thing around and I'm going to take the CV output, the root note CV output. By the way, you press tab to turn the rack around. Take the root note CV output and I'm going to put that to CV on the Europa. Then I'm just going to go chord gate out. And all that means is whenever a chord is triggered, it's going to send just the root note out to this Europa, hopefully. There you go, you can hear an F for the E, D, D flat, C. So now all I'm getting out of the exact same chord sequencer on this new track is the bass note. So making things a little bit easier for you. So let's go duplicate this pluck one more time. Let's drag another player. So I go over to players and I'm going to go to dual arpeggio. Drop that right below the chord sequencer. Now we can hear the notes going from this chord sequencer into the arpeggiator and then that gets spat out into this algorithm virtual instrument which is really cool. So now of course we can use these chords to trigger patterns in the arpeggiator. Let's click on the arpeggiator and try some of the different patterns out. Let's play some chords. Actually let's change this pluck. That's pretty neat. There's one that's really good and one that's not so good. Let's get rid of that one. It sounds nice, but the glockenspiel isn't working. Okay, so we can hear again, this is too low. Let's take it up the octave. Okay, that's sounding really good. One, two, three, four, five, six steps. Let's drag out the steps a little bit. And then let's set the rate here to shuffle. So you're starting to see how I'm working with a whole bunch of different player devices to start generating some music. And that's without even tweaking this dual arpeggiator that much. So of course, if you go in there and make your own patterns, you can see how this could become very useful. I am quite impressed with how this is all working together. And I'm sort of seeing the, the path that Reason Studios has been on with these player devices. And I feel like it's kind of starting to get to that point where it, it can be exciting for a lot of types of musicians. So the last thing I'll show you is just how to take MIDI out of the chord sequencer and send that to a virtual instrument of your own choice. Uh, we'll duplicate that and we'll call this one uh, Serum. I need a Serum virtual instrument. So I'm going to go add instrument track, load up the beautiful Serum virtual instrument. We'll go to a nice plucked patch in here. Next thing I'm going to do is click over on the MIDI inputs and we're going to say we want this to come from the Serum track. See, I've got this one. We should call this Serum uh, Reason Rack. There we go. And, and then on this track here, I'm going to say take MIDI information from the Serum Reason Rack track. So this here is going to go to the chord sequencer. And then the chord sequencer is going to send MIDI information to my Serum track. And this is where things get a little messy. When you make a Reason Rack plugin device and you make just a player, it's going to automatically put a MIDI out device underneath it, thinking that you might want to send this MIDI out somewhere else. Well, when we're sending it internally to the algorithm, it's not going to do that. So I am going to click on this MIDI out device right here and drop it right on top of that one. And now we can see if I have this record enable button on, or monitor button on, we're going to hear information go from this track right here, telling the chord sequencer to play, and then it's going to go out of the Serum Reason Rack, this one right here, into my Serum Virtual Instrument. So it's quite the uh, signal path here, but now we can hear it.
And now we can eliminate this reason rack if we want to, because right now the chord sequencer is sending information out of the chord sequencer into Serum onto this track in Cubase, and we can record that information as MIDI. It, wouldn't it be nice if we could just drag and drop the MIDI? I don't know why we can't, but it's just not possible, so we just record it. Here we go. Okay, so I'm just stop right there, but you can see the chords that have now been spat out onto the Serum Pluck track. I can play with that. I can actually get rid of this whole chord sequencer if I want at this point, and then start dealing with MIDI information in internally inside Cubase. Let me just go over that whole process one, one more time. I'm gonna go over to say an Arturia synth. Let's go to the CMI, love this one. And then I'm gonna make a new Reason Rack track just to start from absolute scratch. Reason Rack, add track. And now watch what happens in this case. If I start from scratch with the players, I'm just going to go chord sequencer. And you can see that it gives me this MIDI out device, which is perfect. I am going to go click over in my genres. Let's go to soul RB. We'll go to, you know what? Let's go to lo-fi dreaming because that's kind of my jam. All right. Now I've got a chord progression. And by the way, I didn't mention, of course, that you can change the key. Here's the key right here. Just go ahead and uh, change that up if you want. And so now I am going to go to this one right here, CMIV. I'm going to call this one uh, Lo-Fi Chords, just to keep it clear in our heads what each of these tracks is doing. This is our Reason Rack uh, plugin track, and I want this one to, to accept MIDI information from everywhere. And then I want this track here to only accept MIDI information from Lo-Fi Chords Event Out, which is right here. So now when I play, on the lo-fi chords track, it's going to trigger a chord, send that to the CMIV. As long as I have, in this case, both record enable buttons selected. If I have them off, nothing happens. If I have the monitor button, it'll work as well. So just be aware that you have to have that set up as well. So I set my chords right here. And if I don't want to record at the same time, I can just use the monitor button to hear the CMI, but then I can record my chords on this track down here on the bottom. So let me clear this pattern down here. I just want to play them in and then we'll press record. There we go. So now I've got some chords played and in real time, they're going from this chord sequencer track to the CMIV. And that's how it works. So, and, I'm, and then at any point, I could, of course, switch this up, press the record right here. And, and at this point, I don't need the record enable on here. And I can record those tracks onto my CMI track. So of course we can see them, all the notes right there. So hopefully that was helpful for you to see this new Reason Rack plugin integrated into Cubase, uh, why it's exciting, good starting points for you to get something going and then maybe change up the chords, play some of the chords yourself in there. And then of course you can go up here and start with a completely blank pattern, play all of your own chords in, learn some stuff, get some tutorials online or whatever, try some new chords out, punch them in, in slow motion and then play them via your device. Now then the next thing is figuring out how to play notes over top of those funky chords. So make sure you go check out my jazz chords theory uh, video. It's free here on YouTube. So if you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button, blah, blah, subscribe button and the bell. See you in the next video.